morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me with the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us begin our time of worship with a moment of remembrance. We, we remember, remember fallen, fallen soldiers, soldiers and the, and the sacrifice, sacrifice they made for the sake of others. Let us begin our time of worship with a moment of thanksgiving. We, we thank God, God for brave men and women that have given their lives so that we may worship without fear. Let us remain standing and sing the hymn 580, Lead On, O King Eternal. here today in a very special occasion on Memorial Weekend as we certainly take a moment to remember those who some we know and so many that we don't know who paid the ultimate price for the freedom and the liberty that we have to worship here today without fear or oppression and we give thanks for that today on this Memorial Day I'm remembering my own uncle Uncle St John Stephen Brown who died in 1968 on June 19th he was killed in Vietnam in a small arms fire. And uh, Steve was like a, an uncle to me, or like a big brother to me. He was just a few years older than I, than I was. And um, we, uh, I can remember so many wonderful memories of him and that, I, that I will cherish. Today, as we, uh, as we take a time to remember, uh, I just place his picture in front of you to represent all of those who have paid the ultimate price for us. I want to ask Valerie to come now and lead us in our uh, Memorial per Day Litany. And I'm going to ask you to stand once again as we begin it with a moment of silence and then we'll share this prayer together. Will you stand once again? Let us give thanks to God for the land of our birth with all its chartered liberties, for all the wonder of our country's story. We give you thanks, O oh God, for leaders in nation and state, and for those who in days past in these present times have labored for the commonwealth. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who in all times and places have been true and brave, and in the world's common ways have lived upright lives and ministered to their fellows. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who served their country in its hour of need, and especially for those who gave even their lives in that service. 
We give you thanks, O God. Almighty God and most merciful Father, as we remember these, your servants, remembering with gratitude their courage and strength, we hold before you those who mourn them. Look upon your bereaved servants with your mercy. As this day brings them memories of those they have lost a while, may it also bring your consolation and the assurance that their loved ones are alive now and forever in your living presence. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be seated. This morning as we go to God in prayer, we gather in this place from all walks of life and we give thanks that we can worship and pray. You bring joys and celebrations today. You also bring concerns and deep need. And so let's join as one great family as we bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and loving God, as we gather in this place today, we give thanks for the blessing of your presence and the blessings, the bountiful blessings that you pour out upon our lives each and every day. We are humbled to be before you, but we gather in this place with sisters and brothers from many walks of life, and we give thanks, O oh Lord, that in this place we have this wonderful opportunity to rejoice together to glorify your name, and to be encouragers one to another as we are connected through Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for our church and all the churches of this great community. We ask that your blessing be upon us all as we do our ministry and our mission that you have called us to be about. We thank you, Lord, for the concerns and needs that we bring to this place, and we know that there are family members and friends that are hurting today, we seek, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your blessed healing. Use us wherever necessary to be a part of that great, great process of healing that we find in Christ. Many grieve today, Lord, and you are our comforter, and you're the one who fills our hearts, that fills that void in our hearts with the love that comes from Christ. Lord, we thank you for the goodness of your grace and mercy and for the opportunity to serve, be in this place and to serve our community. We thank you, Lord, for our nation and, and our world. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one who can convict the leaders to serve and humble themselves before you. And so, Lord, use us for your glory and abide in us now as we join together and we share the prayer that you taught your own disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
I'm going to invite our children to come forward now. Come on. Come on. You can sit right here. Right there. Good deal. What about Batman? You got Batman? I like you that. Hold him, you, want. you want me to hold him? No, you hold him. Okay. You can hold him. Okay. Good morning, everybody. You know, uh, today is a really important day. Uh, we celebrate we, something we call Memorial Weekend right now. And oftentimes it's kind of the beginning of summer, you know. I think it's the beginning of summer. Look at me. I got my, my suit on, my lightweight suit, and it's just I'm relaxed and ready for the summertime. And yet it's also a time when we remember those who, who paid a, a, well, they gave an awful lot for our country. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I showed you all a picture a minute ago. This is my Uncle Steve. And um, my Uncle Steve was one of those people who gave an awful lot for the freedom that we have to be able to come here and worship all, it, without fear and, and not be afraid. I hope your parents will take some time to talk to you a little bit about that. He did. I, want you, I hope your parents will take some time to talk to you about what all this means. It's an important time, and uh, we think about that and give thanks for it. Um, I wish I had something happier to tell you about today, but it's a very serious thing that we talk about, and, I, and, it's, and it's for you all that we share this freedom. You need to know that all these folks out here love you unconditionally, and uh, they're here because they love you. And that's pretty cool. And you need to feel good about that. And, um, you know, there's going to be another generation coming along after you that you're going to be able to love and care for. And that's really, really important. Let's pray together, can we? Dear God, we thank you for our children and how important they truly are. We ask your blessing to be upon them. And we ask you to guide them and keep them safe. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you all can head out to... Uh, little church. And while you all are doing that, the rest of us are going to stand and we're going to sing. Let's sing together number 437. Let's stand and sing. And I want you to pay close attention to the words as we sing.
I want to thank Ramona Logston for serving as our organist today. And uh, I thought, hey, sis, how you doing? <laughs> Always good to see Ramona, and uh, we appreciate her gifts and graces as she shares them with us today. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you now for the word, and we pray that the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. We're continuing our series on doing, uh, doing our faith, working our faith. And um, today I want to talk a little bit about taking the initiative. Have you ever wished that you could start your life over? You know, go back and redo some of the things. I see some of you smiling. Uh, go back and redo some of those things of your past. And yet, you know, we can't undo the past. But we can't, and we can't start over. But the cool thing is that we have a God of fresh starts. Get out your note page, will you, and look, follow along with me as we look at some of the scriptures I want to share with you today. And it begins with Psalm 145, verse 14, where it says, God gives a fresh start to those who are ready to quit. Hmm. This morning, I want to share with you some secrets of making a fresh start, things from God's Word that will help us, regardless of our background, regardless of our past, regardless of where we are in life right now, and every one of us can have the opportunity for a fresh start. Isn't that great news? Let me tell you this story that comes from Mark chapter 10, and you can go back later and read it. But the story goes that one day, Jesus was walking through the streets of the city of Jericho, and a large crowd was following him. And there was this blind beggar by the side of the road named Bartimaeus. Now, friends, you've got to remember, to be blind in Jesus' day meant that you couldn't work, you couldn't read or write, you couldn't probably go anywhere because they didn't have seeing-eye dogs, they didn't have these uh, uh, crosswalk uh, signals, you know, and all the amenities that we have today for blind persons. And so Bartimaeus basically was reduced to uh, a life of begging for his living. Somebody every morning would get up and take him out and set him beside the road on a little pallet there, and there he would beg. And then in the evening, somebody would come out and get him and take him back to his home, and then the, it repeated day in and day out. And that's all his life. His life was miserable. One day, though, Jesus is walking by, and old Bartimaeus thinks, this is my chance. I've got to go for it. This is where I could get my fresh start. I'm not going to miss this opportunity. And he starts yelling and screaming above all the noise of the crowd, saying, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. That's the first step. Write this down. Ready? Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Whatever you do, or whatever you're going to do, do it now. Don't say, well, next year, you know, I think I'm going to have a fresh start. Or next month, when I get enough money, I'm going to begin again. Friends, listen, it's now or never. Seize the moment. You know, when Bartimaeus got up that morning, friends, he had no idea that Jesus Christ was going to cross his path. As far as he knew, it was just another ordinary day. Whoever it was took him out there to the street, sat him down on the pallet, and he began to beg, help me, help me, help me. And then he heard that Jesus was coming. He had no time to prepare for that. Um, Jesus had no way to plan for Jesus. Uh, uh, Bartimaeus had no way to plan for Jesus. It was just an opportunity that was dropped in his lap. So he seized the moment. My friends, every day around us, all of us have that opportunity for a fresh start. We get them all the time, but we don't take advantage of them. And you know why? Because of one word. Ready? Procrastination. Hello. Some of you are really smiling now. Okay. Procrastination. What a weird phenomenon. We think it will make our lives easier. We think that things will get more pleasant if we do that. And yet, what's it do? It brings more stress, right? So what do, we, what, do you, what, do you do, what do you need to do to stop procrastinating? What do you need to start doing uh, that you already know is the right thing to do, but you're not doing it? The truth is, friends, God brought some of us here today for an important reason. It was so he could say, stop making excuses. Get on with it. 
Start living the things you know to do. Don't wait till tomorrow, but start now. Get it? All right, let's go on. The second thing is we have to tame our fear. Write that down. Tame our fear. If we're going to make a fresh start with faith in our life, then we've got to face our fears. We've got to tame those fears and not allow them to control us. When we, choose, when we come to a choice between faith and fear, and we choose fear, it does some things to us. One, it makes us skeptical. Uh, we're afraid of trying anything new because we're just afraid. Uh, it makes us selfish. We're afraid to make a commitment to God or anybody else. Uh, it makes us short-sighted. We focus on the past, not the future. And so there are a lot of fears that we face when it comes to the issue of faith and, you know, stepping over the line in a step of faith. How many times do we need to do that? And it's scary. It's, it's scary to take that leap of faith, and yet we need to do that. There are a lot of fears that we face when, we, when it comes to the issue of faith and stepping over that line, like rejection and disapproval. My friends, Bartimaeus, he was no dummy. He knew that it wasn't the proper thing to do, to shout above the, the crowd, uh, to shout to Jesus. He knew that people were going to look down on him, that they were going to criticize him, but he was desperate. And he knew that Jesus Christ was the only one who could help him. And look what happened. Look in your scripture. When he shouted out to Jesus, the Bible tells us in Mark 10, many of the people scolded him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted even more loudly, Have mercy on me! <laughs> Whose disapproval do you fear the most? Whose disapproval do you fear the most? That person is your God. You see, friends, peer pressure isn't just for our youth anymore. <laughs> we face it all the times, many, many in our lives, many, many ways. It, that fear of disapproval is the struggle for all of us. And the truth is, my friends, we really wouldn't worry so much about what others think about us if we realized they're really not thinking about us. <laughs> you know, people are not thinking about you and me. They're only thinking about themselves. Get it? All right. And then the third thing, you have to announce your faith. Announce your faith. Got to go public with it, okay? Announce your goal. Announce your intention, the, the change that you want to make in your life, what you're going to ask God to do, and clarify what you really want, and then tell somebody. We need to tell others because, friends, I want to say it this way. A secret faith is a shallow faith. A secret faith is a shallow faith. In Mark 10, verse 20, or 51, excuse me, it says, Jesus asked him, talking about Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man answered, teacher, I want to see. Bartimaeus said, I want my sight. I want to be healed. Now here's a question. Why in the world did Jesus ask him that? I mean, he walks over to this guy who's obviously blind on this little pallet here and who's a beggar, and he says, well, what do you want me to do for you? Well, duh. But Jesus didn't ask it for him. him. He asked it for Bartimaeus. Why? So Bartimaeus could make a statement of faith. What did Bartimaeus say? What did he say? I want you to heal me. See? You don't ask somebody to heal you that you don't think can do that, right? Am I, am I right? And by asking him, what do you want me to do for you? Barnabas' answer is basically saying, look, I believe you can do what you, what you say you do. You're the son of God. I believe that you have the power to change me. And I believe you can and will change me. It was a statement of faith. He was announcing it publicly. Now, here's the amazing thing. Jesus Christ is still asking the same question to you and me today. God is asking, what do you want me to do for you? And do you know that every time we set a goal, we actually are making a statement of faith. When we say, here's my goal in life, or here's my objective, then we're saying that this is what I believe God can do in my life in this time. 
Goals are statements of faith. But there's a qualifier you might want to add, and that is if it's in God's will. Because none of us knows the future, right? I mean, nobody can pick that out. In James 4, verse 15, it says, You ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. But we can't predict the future. Now, somebody will say to me every time, say, Phil, you know, I don't want to tell everybody my goal. <laughs> and I understand that. I'm not asking you to put an ad in the paper, okay? I'm not saying call a news conference. You don't have to put it on Facebook. And I really don't want you to put it on Facebook. No. Uh, you don't have to tweet about it. But if we want to make a major change in our life, and we, want to keep, and we keep it to ourselves, then that's a pretty shallow faith. You need to claim enough faith, my friends, to at least share it with somebody, a support group. Like, you know, I'm talking like Sunday school class or Bible study group or some small group that can be there to encourage you. They need to, they need to encourage you. You probably need to encourage some of them. And so that's where you need to announce your faith. Everybody get it? Number four, let's go on. We, we, we receive God's grace. Write that down. We receive God's grace. In Mark 10, verse 52, it says, Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight. What Bartimaeus did there was he accepted the grace of God. Some of us in this room right now are carrying within us some major conflict. Some of us have, are carrying in us major pain, major hurt, major disappointment, major grief in our life. And some of us are, are lonely. We feel like maybe happiness has just passed us by. And some of us are kind of like that blind beggar, Bartimaeus, on the side of the road. We're in a lot of misery. The truth is, friends, we come to church and we, we put on this happy face and yet inside we're dying. And that's tough. If you're in that category today, then I want to say, I'm so glad you're here. Because, friends, Christ wants to give you a fresh start. I want you to listen to this carefully. The emphasis here is on the word give, right? We don't earn it. We don't work for it. We don't uh, deserve it. We don't buy it. We don't jump through a bunch of religious ritual hoops to get it. We simply receive this free gift of God's grace and the ability to make a fresh start. If you look in the Gospel of John in chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. How do you receive God's blessings in your life? Well, you do it by faith. We're talking about working our faith. In Romans 6, verse 14, the Apostle Paul said, That's why faith is the key. God's promise is given to us as a free gift. Friends, we cannot become a person of faith without getting the promises of God into our lives. I mean, think about that verse, what, Philippians 4, verse 13. You know that verse. And yet I have people say to me all the time, I don't think I can change. I just can't. I'd, I'd like to change. I'd like it to be fresh and new, a fresh start. But, you know, it's not, I want things to be different, but I just can't do it. You know what? You're right. You can't do it. You can't do it on your own power. You have to have a power outside of yourself that's greater than yourself to make those changes, to really make a difference in your life. We need God's power, and that's what that promise is all about in Philippians 4, verse 13. How's it go? I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Remember that verse? I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Some of you know it the, the old way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's the same thing. Memorize that verse. I love that story about the little boy whose father asked him to go out in the backyard and to move this big boulder. And the little boy goes out there and he pushes and he pushes and nothing happens. And he pulls and he pulls and nothing happens. And he takes his dog and ties a rope to him and wraps it around this stone and hoot, mush, and nothing happens, you know. He tries all kinds of things. And finally he comes back inside and he says, Dad, I can't do it. It's impossible. I have tried everything, and you can't move that stone. And his dad said, are you sure? Did you try everything? Yes, dad, I tried everything. And his father said, well, you didn't try asking me for some help. My family, let me tell you, a lot of us are in situations in our lives right now 
where we've tried all kinds of stuff. We think it's impossible. It's never going to change. It's never going to be any different. I'm going to ask you, have you ever truly tried asking God for help? Have you tried receiving God's grace and letting God give you the power that you don't have on your own? Friends, Bartimaeus was blind. Yeah. Everybody in the room, shut your eyes. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Everybody, I'm looking. Okay. Now keep your eyes closed till next Sunday. Okay. You know, not that nobody was laughing there. That was not. You can open them. I'm just teasing. But think about that, friends. Bartimaeus was blind. He had enough vision, though, to see that Jesus Christ could help him. Friends, grace isn't just for salvation. It's not just to get your sins forgiven and get you into heaven. That's not what grace is all about. Grace is for daily living. And if we don't have grace in our life, friends, then we're going to be filled with regret. And if we're filled with regret, then we get stuck in the past. And if we're stuck in the past, then we can't make a fresh start. Get it? And lastly, number five. You've got to take the next step. Write that down. You've got to take the next step. And what is the next step? I don't know. I don't know. For you, for every one of, the, of us in this room, it's different. Every one of us in this room is at a different stage in our life. I, I don't know what that next step is that you need to take, but I know this, you need to take it. Some of us, uh, the next step is uh, to turn our entire life over to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Some of us have already done that. But what we need to do now is take that next step of getting into a weekly group of support where we can get and give support. Some of us need to start tithing. Some of us need to go on a mission trip. Some of us need to witness to somebody at our work, a, a friend at work, and invite him or her to church. I don't know. I don't know what the next step is for you. But I do know this. Every single one of us in this room has got one. God never is never finished in taking us in our faith to the next level. There's always going to be a, ne a next step toward faith, toward love, toward joy, and toward happiness. If you study this scripture in Mark 10, and I invite you to really take a good look at it. It's kind of long. It's 50 some odd verses, but take a look at it. But in Mark 10, verse 46, it says that Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road as Jesus was going by. You read six verses later in verse 52, and it says, Bartimaeus, talking about Bartimaeus, it says he regained his sight and he began following Jesus on the road. That's before he sit, he's, you know, he's sitting beside the road, before he meets Jesus, and he began following Jesus on the road. Which of those two verses describes your life? Are you sitting beside the road or are you following Jesus on the road? Hmm? Which of those two lifestyles do you think would be more fulfilling? Sitting beside the road or living, following Jesus on the, on the road? Which do you think has more joy, more meaning, more satisfaction? Sitting beside the road or following Jesus on the road? Which one do you want to represent your life? Sitting beside the road or following Jesus on the road? My family, listen, faith is more than just believing. It's more than just thinking about Jesus. It's more than just talking about Jesus. It's more than just having an opinion or a conviction about Jesus. Faith is action. It is movement. It is activity, friends. Faith is something that we do. In fact, the Bible says in James 2, verse 14, if people say they have faith but do nothing, their faith is worth nothing. And so I ask you today, my family, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on in order to take the next step to faith in your life? Let's pray together. Loving God, we know that 
we, we, we put a lot of things in front of our faith. Forgive us and have mercy on us, Lord. Because there are so many areas of each of our lives where we can turn over another, a new leaf, a fresh, have a fresh start that you offer us if we would just seek it. Lord, thank you for your gift of love and grace to us. And thank you for the fresh starts that you're giving to so many right now in this room. Move us forward, Lord. And we give you thanks. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you to stand with me and let's affirm our faith as we respond to the word. Our affirmation today is found on page 881 of your hymnal. It's the Apostles' Creed. And I invite you to stand and join me now. Let's unite our voices and share in this historic profession of our Christian faith. Will you join me? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. Friends, our ushers are coming forward, so let's prepare ourselves now to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Oh God, we do thank you again for the blessings you give us in life. And now as we celebrate that blessing by offering our own gifts and tithes, we pray that you would make us generous and that you will be glorified through it. Use, us, use these gifts for the glory of your kingdom and the work of the church. In Christ we pray. Amen.
remain standing and let's join together for our closing hymn, number 717, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. We'll do the first, second, and fifth verses. Thank you, O oh God, for the blessing of this day, and we pray that as we go from here, we have this great news to march our marching orders and to go forward and share it with others. Now give us your peace that passes all understanding. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you, and greet your neighbors before you go. Mm -hmm.